Right, I don't think we'll have anyone in for a minute, so uh, I will wait around for a minute until a few people pop in, because obviously this is just a, um, what's the word, a impromptu or sporadic kind of live stream, it's not, um, it's not planned or anything, so uh, I've not got a topic, I've not got a haul, I've not got anything, so I will literally just have to wait around a minute until a few people pop in. I know that YouTube notifications aren't very good. Oh, actually, while we're waiting for a few people to pop in, um, don't forget to have your notification bell turned on. And also, uh, you know, if, you, uh, if you're not subscribed, subscribe, because uh, then you might actually get the, um, the notifications pretty quickly. Oh, we've got four or five people jumped in already, so that's pretty cool. Is it Thursday again? No, it's not. It's Saturday. I didn't do it on Thursday. It's been a really mad week, really. I wasn't really feeling it, if I'm honest, as well on Thursday. And yeah, I just decided not to do it. So I thought to myself, no worries. I can do it Friday or Saturday because actually, and, and I, I said to myself yesterday, I thought to myself yesterday, uh, oh, it would be a good idea to do it on Saturday because I've never done, uh, I don't think, well, I might have done a live stream on a Saturday, but if I have, it's maybe a Saturday night. But I've not really done Thursday talks on a Saturday, um, and I'll have to say any really live stream. So I wanted to see what the viewership would be like on a Saturday, see if we get any different people in and stuff. It's just exciting to have a bit of a change as well. So it worked out pretty well because I can actually experiment with, with what this would be like. But because it's a bit of a impromptu uh, live stream, obviously I've not... Um, set it up or planned it or anything in advance or told people about it there might be there might not be as many people in as, as i may think so i don't know but it works out however it works out but anyway yeah we've got uh yasmin in there uh, one of the regulars to the channel if you have any comments questions or queries wax as i say i haven't got a topic or anything like that today uh i just thought i'd pop on but with a couple of people who mentioned on, I think it was yesterday, I was in one of the live streams and he said, oh, did you do a live yesterday on Thursday? And uh, I said, you know, I mentioned how I hadn't done a live, so I thought, oh, you know what, I will definitely pop on uh, and do a live. And uh, and then, yeah, I'll be back to normal next week on Thursday. Uh, also, don't forget, I've got the We Selling Rebels podcast coming out on Monday again. It's a good one this week. It's a bit more positive. Um, and I forgot what the topic was. What was the topic I was doing this week? I don't know, I can't remember. What was it? Well, I don't know, but it's a good topic anyway. It's pretty cool. Uh, we've got Peter in. Hi there. Can't stay long as out soon. Oh, I saw, um, Peter, that you had done... I saw your little community post um, saying that you'd done, what, six vlogs from uh, a trip out or something? I can't believe it. It's crazy. Um, so what do you do? Did you do... Um, did, did you do separate vlogs for the same event or did you do so you did six separate vlogs for the same event or did you do maybe you went to a few different places and then got six vlogs out of that because that's crazy because what i normally do when i do a vlog is i'll just get one vlog out of like one day or whatever um so i'm guessing you might have sort of cut that up into a few different vlogs so that's quite interesting quite an interesting idea i've never really done it yeah, uh, Yasmin says Bushy Park uh, Part 3, so he must have split them up like that. Um, same match, actually. I've got a video coming in a week or so, or maybe six days, maybe Friday, I think. I think it might be Friday it's coming out on the reseller YouTubers that I watch. So um, it'd make it, I thought it'd make an interesting video. I saw Caroline um, Always Making Lemonade had done a very, very similar video. And I thought to myself, oh, I'd love a, I'd love a go at one of those videos. So what I've done, it's basically just a, a video uh, going through a few of the different YouTubers, the reselling YouTubers, not, not just random YouTubers. So it's reselling related. And I'm going through the different UK resellers that I watch at the moment. And uh, yeah, it's just made quite an interesting video. And then obviously, um, if people, some of the people subscribe to my channel, aren't subscribed to those other channels, um, then they can go over there and subscribe to those channels. And the reason I, I brought that up is because Peter dropped in the chat there and Peter's one of the people on the list. So, uh, yeah, but it's... Uh, so that would be a, quite a good video. I know most people, most of the regulars, will already be subscribed to, to most of the channels that, that I'll mention anyway, but um, I know maybe there will be some that aren't. So I thought it'd just be it's just an interesting video. And, and also, it's nice to do a slightly different video. I always, I always like um, 
trying to find videos that I've not done because I've done so many videos on reselling that you know I don't I really uh, there's hardly any that I can think that I've not done that um you know about reselling there's just so many I've done all you know different courses and all the I, I did even did um because I did those videos those tips videos and I've done loads of different tips videos all the tips under the sun that you can think I mean if you type in something to do with reselling on my channel that you want to find you'll probably find it and it's brilliant but also it means that at this point I've not really got any um ideas or any ways of doing fresh videos it's just the same kind of style videos which is perfectly fine if most people want to see them but also for me as a, a content creator I like to do something different so I uh, I really want to try and keep going with the ideas and try and find different videos that I can do, you know, because uh, that's what that's what really interests me with it. Um, Peter says I recorded lots of footage from Bushy Park and surrounding areas and managed to get six vlogs out of it, um, about fifteen and about fifteen minutes, just like my trip to Richmond. Split it into six vlogs. Ah, cool. So you must have done quite a lot of footage then, really. Oh, I didn't mention as well Richard Payne's in. Hi there, Richard. Um, but yeah, so if you've got any comments or any questions or anything, do drop them in the chat. Um, I'll probably stay on for about half an hour. I probably won't do a full episode because, as I say, I don't know what... I don't know whether there'd be tons of people in or anything. Um, but yeah, so I'll just stay on for uh, half an hour or something and, and we'll see what happens. Um... Yeah, so, um, and other than that, what else have I got? I've got, the, I've had the car boot haul come out today, you know, yesterday. Um, I'm not sure when my next car boot will be, but I'm definitely going to do some more. Uh, I don't know whether I mentioned that yet. Did I mention last week? I can't remember whether I mentioned last week or not. I don't think I did. But my auction house, my local auction house, and this is really annoying, has gone into administration. Obviously, it's more annoying for them than me, but, um... It's going to administration now. I was thinking because it said on a news article or something online that um, basically they would still be doing the auctions for a while, and uh, and so that would be fine because I, something to do with uh, there were. I don't know whether the original staff were continuing it going for a little bit or whether the administrators were getting some people in to staff it. So I don't even know what was going on, but something I heard about how we were going to maintain the auction house for a little bit um, before it completely kind of goes or gets bought by another company or something. I don't know what was going on. I don't know the ins and outs of it. But essentially, I was thinking that I'd still have a few more auctions to go to. That was my thinking. And uh, from this article that I read, and I go on uh, my usual place, you know, online where I get me, uh, where I go to do my auction. And I go on there and there's no catalogue on there. And I'm like, oh, bloody hell, it, it must not be on. Anyway, it uh, turns out that the auction isn't on. They are, I think they are um, potentially looking for a buyer so that then the auction house may continue. Um, but for the time being, and possibly even permanently, uh, but certainly, definitely for the time being, the auction house isn't running. So that's a bit of a shame. So the only other auction house I've got is the cheap, you know, it's in a fair radius to me. And that one's probably 35, 40 minutes away. There are also other high-end antique ones. But I don't think the high-end, like there's Adam Partridge and there's a couple of others that are high-end, more high-end antique ones. I don't know whether... There's going to be, there might be a margin, let's say, at Adam Partridge's to actually make money on. Uh, you know, because some auction houses, there's not a margin because they're just literally uh, geared towards collectors. So the only real option I feel I've got is this other one that I used to go to, which was the lesser quality one, essentially. So, of course, that leads me to think, well, I've kind of got to go back to car boots. I've got to try and start doing a few more car boots again. So, uh, yeah, you may see more car boot hauls and stuff um, on the channel, I'm not sure. But, yeah, definitely, I need to I need to do something with that. But it is a shame that that auction, the auction has I normally go to. Uh, I mean, there was literally no word of warning. Literally, a few days before the auction, this catalogue, obviously, the, I was going to look at the catalogue. A few days before that, obviously, there was these posts that came out, and then that was it. So I was like, whoa, blow me now. But I have got quite a lot of stuff in my lockup, so I've always got that to fall back on at the moment. Uh, 
But yeah, it's just it's just annoying, isn't it? It's just really it's quite annoying. Um, yeah, I stopped going to my auction house. There's a price there. Uh, new location was times four what I was paying. My God, that's a lot. Um, glad you saw my. Uh... Oh hi Sam. Yeah, Sam's in the chat. Um, you got some good items from that cobra. I do need to mention actually, and I put it in a pinned comment on that vlog. That Teddy, that um, don't free Freddy Teddy isn't going to be 50 or 60 quid, unfortunately. A guy uh, commented, literally, I think this morning or something, on my vlog saying uh, there's basically about 10 of those teddies on for 15 quid, 20 quid, something like that. And what I had done before doing the vlog, before doing the haul video, is I had typed in a very quick um, search, to run a search to see what, what it would go for. Anyway, what popped up is an a international listing of it and an international, you know, international sales. But what I had done is I had typed in too long a search term and then it refined the search too much so that then all the other ones that were listed in the UK weren't on that search. So then what I did when I got that comment this morning was typed in a shorter search term and you know, lo and behold, like he mentioned, there's all these ones listed in the UK. So yeah, I have to own up to that. My fault. Uh, it's probably not going to get 50 or 60 quid. Probably more like 15, 20 quid, something like that. Um, but from a quid investment, I'm still happy. As I say, I've pinned a comment to that video now, just, you know, so people are aware. Hopefully, if they look in the comments, they'll be aware and they'll know that actually I'm not going to get 50 or 60 quid for it. It is a shame, as I say, but there's still going to be some profit on it. But yeah, other than that, I did get, I mean, even that, you can class that as a good item because I only paid a quid for it. But um, yeah, I got, yeah, I got a pretty good items. It was pretty good car boot. I couldn't, couldn't believe it really because I, I didn't, you know, I wasn't really in the frame of mind. Like, it, you know, I wasn't necessarily depressed or anything or feeling down or negative. Just the fact that I hadn't done a car boot in so long, I wasn't in that frame of mind of knowing really how to get into it again or, or really trying to get into it but then for whatever reason slowly it just kind of fl uh, flowed and I was getting into it and I was enjoying it and and yeah I got quite a lot of stuff so I was pretty happy um, and that was from Blakemere which is a fairly small car boot as I mentioned in the vlog section um, so yeah I mean if I'll go back to some of the larger car boots that I used to do then, and I really commit myself, you know, then I can definitely get some, some good stuff. So, you know, quite a lot of stuff as well. So, yeah, but I'm going to have to do that because essentially if I've not got this auction now, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a an, an annoying thing really. There is one other auction house that's around here. Um, I'm not going to say the name of it in case I choose to go there because then I'm just inviting my own competition and you can find it fairly easily anyway if you if you apply yourself. Um, but yeah, there is one of the auction house that I am uh, that is a possibility, so I might be able to to go to that one because I really don't want to go back to this other auction house that, as I say, was lesser quality because I I I don't want to do it. That's not the way I want my eBay store to move. I don't want it to move backwards into lesser quality stuff again. I want it to move forwards into better quality stuff or at least minimum have the same sort of quality stuff. So, yeah, um, it just is what it is anyway with that and, and we'll just have to see how things go. As I say, maybe getting to cut back to car boots is the way to go. Got Andrew in the chat. Hi there, Andrew. Thanks for joining us. Um, I enjoy using the, yeah, I've seen you enjoy using that community post uh, thing, PT. You've done quite a few of them, haven't you? Um, as I can interact with my sub. You know what it's like? It's kind of like um, Facebook or Instagram. A Facebook or Instagram post, but on your on your YouTube, and I really do like that. I, I, I'd probably do a, a couple of week or something of the community posts, because I do, I do enjoy it, and I've been enjoying putting my, you know, if I've got any... Uh, you know, people want to ask me questions for reselling Rebels or people want to ask me certain things or let's say I've done a car boot or done a haul or whatever, I'll put a picture of that on and stuff. And I, so I like doing that. It does, I get what you mean. It does definitely, you feel a bit more connected to your audience because the, the videos are brilliant and the comments are brilliant as well. But I just, I, I do like that post format. I don't know why. It's just, it is just uh, quite nice really. Uh, Bexify is in, not Brexify, but Bexify. I nearly said it wrong again then. Um, 
and yeah, as I say, money, money mental Zin Andrew. Uh, I find some of my subs aren't on Facebook or Insta, so we could, yeah, I, I know, yeah, definitely. I've actually had a few conversations with people in the comments and stuff, uh, and they've said that they're not on Facebook or Instagram. So uh, again, that's another. It's another thing to consider, really, when you know, let's say you want to get some information out there to people. If I mean, for me, I'm not. On, I, I am on Facebook, but I don't really use it that much, as I've said countless times. But um, I am on Instagram, so I post a lot on there. You see, but I always, I, I, I can tend to forget that not everyone's on Instagram and therefore the community tab on YouTube is quite good because generally a lot of the people who are on YouTube, the subs or maybe uh, they, they also have YouTube channels themselves, a lot of the people who watch me, um, if uh, watching me on YouTube, generally they're over on Facebook as well. Normally, as I say, there might be a few who aren't. Um, so generally, if I do a YouTube community tab, post and an Instagram post for whatever it is I'm promoting that covers quite a lot of people um, and then I do have my Facebook page running I've got it automatically set up so what I mean by that is every time I post a video to my YouTube I have a, I, I use a service that I've used for years and years actually back when I was doing social media marketing brilliant service called if this then that I F T T T I think that's right and uh, it basically allows you to automatically post your content to different social medias so you can post your youtube content to your blog you can post your youtube content to your facebook page you can post your you can post stuff to twitter and you know all automatically and stuff so that's what i do with that and that's my, my facebook page is kind of just cycling around on that really i don't now i wouldn't do if this and then that for my facebook page if i really wanted to grow it or market it because it's not it's not really a very personal way or a human way of running a page, do you just using if this then that. But for me, I don't really have any want or necessity or need to grow my Facebook page in any way. I might do at some point, but uh, so therefore I just, you know, put the the YouTube videos when they get published out here through this if this then that we just go automatically on there and and then it just maybe sends a couple of more people over to watch the vids um but i don't you know what i've never really done and a lot of people do this and i think maybe i should start doing this is promoting my videos over my reselling videos over on my insta um maybe in my stories or maybe on the the, the grid you know i'm not sure but i've never really done that so i, I might think so. I, th I think i might have done it I don't know, once or twice maybe but um Oh, yeah, I've never really done that, so that might, that might be something I'd like to do. Uh, Ginge TV, I don't think I've seen them. Uh, hey, Ads, uh, been watching for some time, but not sure if you mentioned before. Uh, where do you store all your items? I have uh, quite a few locations where I store my items. You'll have seen in the vlogs. I have a shed, of course. Uh, you know, one of the most recent vlogs, I've probably shown it, the inside of it. Um, I have done. I have a spare room. I have a lock-up. Um, and then even there's bit I think there's bits and bobs down in the garage of random odds and sods. So yeah, I have basically three rooms full of stuff. Um, the lockup being quite a, a big a big uh, well it's not really big space but you know you can fill it quite quite big. So um, yeah, so I have quite a quite a good amount of space to store stuff. Um, and and yeah, it's quite nice. And the lockup isn't too far from me. It's literally three four five minute drive so it's nothing but literally yeah it's less than five minute drive so uh that's nice having that and i have my unlisted there and then i have listed here essentially because if i had unlisted down at the um sorry if i had listed down at the lockup it'd just be a hassle going back into so i've all me listed here um as well as a bit of unlisted you know that i'm processing at the time and then i just go to my lockup get a couple of boxes each week or a few boxes, bring them down here and then I can go through them throughout the week and do it that way. It's quite good. It's it, I've honed my process down quite nicely now. I quite enjoy it. Um, the only thing that I would like to do, uh, and this is just uh, me being lazy thing again or trying to be as efficient as I can. We, we could dress it up either way. If you want to say that I'm really efficient and trying to be really efficient, you can say that. If you just think I'm lazy, then you can say that, whichever you want. But with a lockup space, down in Lostock, which is where I live. And it's the same company that does my lockup down in Winsford. So we've just expanded. 
and I'm trying to get in there now. I've been on the waiting list for ages. I've not heard anything back, so I don't know. Uh, but it's it's such a it, the one here in Lostock, uh, which is you lock it, um, is a very small facility, not as big as Winsford. So and it got filled up very quickly. Now, when people generally have a lock up, you know, apart from maybe some people who went to lock up for a month or two because they're moving or whatever it may be, but generally what people do is they're business owners and they have it for months and months and months or years and years. For example, I've had my lockup for one year, six months now, and I'm not stopping it anytime soon. So once, you, once you've got business owners in there who know what they want, know that they need that space you know, for a fairly long period of time, they don't leave. So then you have to wait and wait and wait forever until someone gets out of there. So... Yeah, I've been on the waiting list for a few months now, and basically what that would mean is I could move the stuff from Wins... Uh, did I say Wins Winsford before? I meant Winsham, if I'd said Winsford. Winsford is a different place. But I can move it from Winsford, Winsham, which is about a five-minute drive to me, move all my stuff down here in Lostock, and literally not have an end, like a zero-minute drive for me. Uh, well, I mean, if you're driving, it'd be like a 30-second-minute drive or whatever, but I'd probably just... What I'd do is probably get like a little cart and then just walk down there, because I love walking anyway. So I just get a little cart, and then walk down there, and then fill the cart up, and then walk back. Cause it's a bit of exercise, and, uh, and it's, yeah, it's really, really, really efficient then. And then I wouldn't need to, because when I go to the auction, I have to divert off to Winsham to stop off at the lockup to fill it up, right? But I wouldn't need to do that. I could come straight back to Lostock because my lockup is then in Lostock. So that'd be really cool. But with, as I say, I've not heard anything back and stuff. So um, I don't know. But that'd be weird. That'd be so good. That'd be so. That'd be the, the pinnacle of laziness for me. That'd be yeah. This is so good. You know, I've, all, I've always been so. I've always been a businessman, and it's probably not very good. This it's probably not the best way to be as a businessman. So don't follow this advice. But I've always been a businessman that likes convenience and laziness basically just if i can get as 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 easy as i can you know this this process if i can get a process that's as easy as it as it can possibly be um just for the benefit of me being lazy um then i'll do that because it's just it's just so good and also yeah you can argue the fact that then you can list more and stuff whether i actually do that is is another another thing in itself but you know, having an easy process in the background does mean it gives you the time to, to list more and stuff. But generally, it's not the fact I'm listing more. It's the fact that I'm spending more time on YouTube or I'm spending more time doing other stuff and just end up listing the same amount anyway. So I do need to try and list a bit more. Um, also, if you haven't already, give the video a, a thumbs up. Um, I appreciate it if you would. Um, what you're up to after this live ad, I'm going around to see a couple of friends. Saturday is normally my day off, so... Well, it is these days. It never used to be, but I'm, you know, I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best to actually have some time off. And recently, Saturday and Sundays have been those times off, and I'm I'm fairly enjoying it. I'm fairly comfortable with actually taking a bit of a step back from work. Of course, this is. I mean, this isn't work. I don't want to to make you guys feel you're a burden or anything. It's not at all. But in one way, it, some people would constitute YouTubers' work. So. Even this is it's it's um, somewhat relating to my work, so I can't really say I'm having a complete full day off today. But you know, it, it's it's as close I'm going to get. Um, but this isn't really work to me. But anyway, um, so yeah, I and I'm enjoying the Saturdays and Sundays off. It is really nice. Uh, you know, one week I went swimming on the Sunday, saw my friends on the Saturday. I had a barbecue one week on a Saturday night, and again, we were seeing my friends and stuff. And it, it's just been, it's been nice. It really has been out to a couple of different, uh, you know, towns and stuff. And I think I went for a walk one week. Um, and, it, you know, it's just been nice. So it is nice to get a bit of time off, and I would encourage people to have a bit of, um, a bit of a relax. Because I, I, cause it's something I didn't do for so long. I really didn't. I, um, I didn't have time off for, for years, so... Uh, oh, people, there's a load of people jumped in. There's about five or six people just jumped in. So I don't know, maybe the notifications have just gone out or something because it seems like literally the chat's jumped up by... Well, the, the, viewer, the viewer counts jumped up by about six. Um, what's this here? Andrew says. Oh, Antoinette's in. Hi there, Antoinette. Um, Kez18. I don't know. I've not seen them before, so hi there anyway. 
I did say it to you at the start of the live, it might be interesting because we might get a few different people in because it's Saturday. Uh, Kirsten, ooh, only just seen you on. Ah, that's all right. It might be, as I say, it might be the notifications then. Um, oh, tap pedal is in. Yeah, we've got a few more people in now. Um, I'm at home chilling though, but still work on eBay and watch TV too. Oh, I don't know what that's in reference to. Probably someone's... I don't know what that's in reference to. Um, but yeah. Uh, do you know of any natural replacements for caffeine? Natural replacements for caffeine? I don't have... Ca oh, God, yeah. We're jumping up by loads at the moment on the viewer count. It must be that the notifications must have only gone out or something. Or some, to some people. I don't know. But it's really jumped up, the viewers. Anyway. So what was I saying? Natural replacement cap. So I don't, I've never, I know you, I know that was to Kirsten, but I've not got anything in the chat to go on. So just give me this. I'm just going to ramble about this for a minute until someone drops a question in. Anyway, and please feel free to drop a reselling related question in because I know we've, we've bounced around a bit today. We've done a bit of reselling chat, but a bit of non-reselling. So anyway, so I don't drink caffeine. I haven't done so for four years since my insight. Well, I say that I did have a time where I plucked up the courage. I know this sounds really weird, plucked up the courage to have a cup of tea. But <laughs> it sounds so bad, doesn't it? Anyway, I plucked up the courage to have a cup of tea one time. Um, and uh, and it was fine, you know, it was great. But I don't drink caffeine because, and this is only because of a fear and I might try it again actually sometime soon because I'm much better these days with my anxiety. Um, so obviously I feel like I could probably drink it no trouble. I mean, I went to the dentist and everything and that was like a really big fear for me. So I should be able to drink a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. But the only reason I don't do it is because back first off when I first got my anxiety, uh, the doctors said to me for the next few days, I, I obviously got admitted into hospital, you see, and I had a, um, what do you call it? It was like an ECG machine because obviously I had a panic attack and all the rest of it and I was going crazy. You know, like I was, my body was going crazy and we wanted to make sure there was nothing wrong with me. So uh, they said to me, look, you're going to feel tired over the next few days, all the rest of it. And, um, you know, just maybe stay away from really a lot of sugar or, you know, tea and coffee and stuff, caffeine. So, you know, they said that to me and I went back to the doctors a few weeks later after this was when my anxiety was at the peak where I wouldn't be able to get out of bed without having a panic attack. That was like how bad it was at that time. But I, I went to the doctors, despite that being a terrible thing. Um, and they said, you know, maybe stay. I think they said again, maybe stay away from tea or coffee or something. So then that's built up in my psyche, hasn't it? This kind of uh, thing. Oh, well, I can't have caffeine because that's going to give me a panic attack. So then that, what that does is you blow that fear up, blow it up, blow it up, and then you choose to stay away from it and until you either pluck up the courage to try it again and realise that it's okay, or you just don't do it for your entire life, um, which is not what I want to do. I want to try and um, get over that because it's, it's just a stupid little thing, really. It's nothing big. It's nothing major. Um, so... Anyway, so I don't, I don't have caffeine because I think, oh God, I'm going to have a panic attack because of the caffeine going through my blood, stimulating my adrenaline, getting a high heart rate and then going to panic attack, right? Flight or fight or fight or flight or which way around it is, I don't know. Anyway, so I don't have that, but I have peppermint tea. That's my main thing. I love peppermint tea. And uh, I would say you don't need a natural um, alternative to caffeine. The only thing I ever get caffeine in is the tiny, tiny amount that's in chocolate. Um, as far as I'm aware, there's a tiny amount in chocolate. I don't know who's told me that, but I'm sure I found it out of somewhere, someone or somewhere. Um, so that's the only part of my diet that I have any real sort of caffeine in. And, and so I would say you don't really need it, you know, but then if you're going down that route, you've got to go. And this is the thing with food as well and anxiety. There's big links between food and anxiety, not just the fact of your psychological... Um, idea or projection onto certain foods of that's going to make me anxious but also uh, just generally um your energy levels and things like that and that'll you know either help or harm your anxiety now for me it's not so much energy it's the fact that i think i'm gonna have a heart attack from eating something with high saturated fat so even to this day if something has more than let's say five grams of saturated fat in a meal you know in one meal 
I'll be, it will be very hard for me to eat it. Now I have eaten me, I, I do try and push myself uh, to eat meals that are, actually I had a meal not long ago that probably had about 10 grams of saturated fat in one, now that's very high for a meal to have 10 grams of saturated fat and you shouldn't really be having meals like that all the time anyway, it's fine as a treat a couple of times, you know, once a week or something like that, I don't know, but uh, you know, but I make a, a mental association to the fact that once I've eaten that meal, it's going to make me feel like crap because of it being high saturated fat. Then what's going to happen is it's going to build up my arteries and then I'm going to have a heart attack because I don't feel a level of trust in my own body that it can cope with that level of saturated fat. So essentially, again, we come back to this idea of when you are anxious, you're fighting yourself because it's your mentality not kind of trying to override your trust in your body in one respect. It's, it's weird, but, and it manifests itself in different ways for different people. So I might have an unhealthy association with food and my anxiety because when I was younger, I was quite, I was fairly fat, you know, and I ate a lot of saturated fats and stuff. So therefore there's a, there's a link there. For other people, it might not, man, their anxiety might not come across in food at all, at all, not one bit. And they might be an anxious individual, they might be someone who has panic attacks and everything, but food doesn't even come into it. They're more than happy to eat things that are high in saturated fats or that, are, that essentially are really, really bad for them, but they're not anxious about it, you see, because it's an association that's more personal to me and properly, probably also personal to other people as well, but not everyone. So we associate these things in different ways, you know, that's what, how it comes across. And, uh, you know, and, and I've associated it with various different things, not just that. So, for example, uh, smoking and drinking, all the rest, anything that can harm my body. You see what I'm doing here? I'm creating a protective field across my body to say, you will not come in, you will not enter this safety zone. Um, and therefore, I don't want to smoke, or I don't want to drink, or I don't want to do the other. Now, there's other reasons why I don't want to drink that I won't go into, um, just pertaining to family and stuff but there's other reasons for that but also it comes into this idea of I want to preserve myself and then we then get into the idea of that's simply ego protection you know that's self-preservation self-protection and uh, therefore this is why spirituality has helped me so much because spirituality hope opens you up to a different dimension of uh, self-sacrifice of actually sacrificing yourself or somewhat letting go of yourself or your ego um, and therefore that's how I've been able to come um, a little bit further you know and then um, I've been able to actually come uh, further with my progression with my anxiety from relieving some of that control that I'm trying to take because when we control anxiety we're making it harder for ourselves so if we don't want to be anxious if we're like we're trying to you know bottle ourselves up like I don't I don't want to be anxious I don't want to be anxious I, or, or even with depression as well I don't want to be depressed I don't want to be depressed that is a an affirmation of the fact that you're scared to be anxious or depressed and therefore it'll start to come on more and more because you can't control it you can't control whether it's going to come on or not you know you just it's just going to happen so then what you, you start to have to do is is, is just let it take you if it's going to take you it's going to take you and you have to sacrifice yourself in such a way and, uh, and and relieve that control and then once you start to relieve that control what you'll find it's really weird this and it doesn't it takes a while to build this up but what happens is your uh, anxiety or your depression will slowly start to fade out right um and you know you might still have it to some extent i still have it but you can start to recognize it more and then you, you can even say to yourself or you can say to the anxiety, don't I welcome you in, I welcome you in or something like that or come, come on in, you know, um, and this ties in with spirituality as well. Um, of Again, that self-sacrifice, you're sacrificing yourself to your anxiety, you're saying, I'm not afraid of you, I accept you completely, whatever you want to do to me, do go on and do to me. And as I say, if you do this enough times, it starts to actually settle your anxiety. Now, this next thing, I'm not going to say anyone should ever do. Um, but essentially, what I did, I, I had, uh, I, don't, I don't think I've really discussed this on video, so I don't want people to get um, too worried about me, because I'm fine now. But 
back uh, late part of last year, I started to get some mild, and I want to call them mild because I don't want to insult anyone who's had quite severe issues with this, but I got some mild suicidal thoughts. And essentially, I think I might have touched on this in video, I'm not sure whether I have. But I got some mild ones of those, and I, I was trying to fight them, I was trying to fight them. And every time I picked up a knife to cut my veg at the night time, I couldn't do it. I immediately had to drop the knife because I thought, I'm going to stab myself through the heart. You know, I'm going to... And I didn't know I was going to do... Like, I didn't want to do that. But the thought... It was almost like I was getting to the point where a thought was controlling me. So this happened for quite a while. And every time I would pick up a knife, I would think like that immediately. And I was trying to avoid them. I was trying to step back from them, trying to... You know, and, and I'd get depressed and I'd get down and I'd think, oh my God, this is never going to end. It's never going to go away. And I don't want to preach this to anyone. I don't want to say that this is the best way to go about it. This is just what works for me. And this is incredibly dangerous in one respect as well. So just be aware of this. But what I did was I let the suicidal thoughts come in. And I said to myself, I'm happy with these thoughts. I'm accepting of these thoughts, okay? If you want to give me these thoughts or if these thoughts are coming up, I'm not going to try and push them away. I'm just going to be accepting of it, right? And I started to do this and, you know, sometimes the suicidal thoughts will come in. I'll get, I would get a bit, uh, you know, back off a bit and be a bit scared. But then what I'd do is over time, once I was doing this and I was training myself to just be accepting of just that thought being there, being present, I actually got over them. And now I can talk about it so much and I don't have any suicidal thoughts. Things can pop up like that, these thoughts in my mind, like all the, the worst thoughts you can possibly imagine can pop up in my mind. And it's like, yeah, but I don't need to do anything. I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, that's it's cool. And I don't say I'm fine as in a repression. I'm not, I was repressed in some respect with my repression around death or suicide, suicidal, suicidal thoughts and stuff. But then I transformed that repression um, and, and now it's in my conscious awareness. So that means that I can actually actively not control, but accept the thoughts that I have. And it allows me to bring forth into a new dimension of life that I can be happy even with uh, destructive thoughts or ideas in the sense of within my own mind, you know, so if I get a destructive, a self-destructive thought that comes up, I know completely how to, to sort that, you know, and, and the, the, the way I sort it is by just letting it come in and letting it pass again. And, you know, this comes into my kind of um, things, you know, the, the things, uh, the oh, what am I trying to say? The kind of actions and the kind of um, things that I've done with, with uh, Buddhism, because Buddhism is kind of all about that, about training, realizing that your thoughts don't necessarily completely um, identify with who you are. You know, they're just thoughts that are passing, you know, passing along. And therefore, with meditation and stuff, you can also do this. You can become more accepting. But also, it's like uh, psychologist Jung said, Carl Jung, you can't be, uh, one doesn't become enlightened by imagining figures of the light. Um, but by making con uh, dark, the dark conscious. So what he means by that is you have to go into the depths of your darkest places uh, and get really, really depressed and down and almost, you know, really insane before you can start to realise a more holistic personality that, you know, is, is really healthy for you, you know, and it's, it, it's, oh my God, it was hard for me. It was a months of, of very, I, I was very, very bad. I was very, very bad and I, you know, I wouldn't wish it upon anyone, but at the same time, it's part of the way of, of getting over these things. And if you type in Google, uh, you know, hero, uh, hero archetype or hero's journey, you'll find this journey in the form of a circle in which you start off and then you're going on this journey, you're facing your challenges. Then what happens is you go into the abyss um, and essentially you sacrifice a part of yourself um, and then you're reborn as someone slightly new, a more kind of, um, a tra it's kind of like a transformation in consciousness. And then you have this transformation in consciousness, which allows you to be a lot more free and, and, and accepting of yourself and others. And then what happens is you go back round into the start position again, but as a more, you know, holistic individual. Um, and obviously on the way, 
in the traditional myth, the hero then attains the goddess or the, the princess or whatever um, wh when they've come out of this transformation. And as I say, they're then a fully fledged human. As I like to say, I don't know whether anyone, any psychologist has, has coined this phrase before, but if they haven't, then I'm going to claim it for myself. I'm sorry. Um, but I like to say a fully fledged human being. Uh, and this process, uh, whether it be a spiritual process, whether it be... Um, a Jungian psychology process, which it is, um, but also there's so many dimensions to it. This is the process of becoming a fully fledged human being. And for, for some people like myself, it's taken me having anxiety and depression and other things in my life to get me there. For other people, it's a little bit more easy, you know, easier. For example, maybe they uh, can simply do something within their life maybe it's a job opportunity that they're particularly scared about or something and then they push through it and they get through the challenges they obviously get the job they they also maybe have uh, get a wife or something at the time or you know have a girlfriend or whatever and then that pushes them into this transformation of consciousness which then allows them to be more of a fully fledged human being but in that context that is an unconscious process now this con this hero's journey is a an unconscious process to a lot of people. For me, it's been a conscious process because I needed it to be a conscious process for me to be able to tell other people about it. That's what I've always I've thought, that um, I'm always like a receptacle. I've always thought of myself as a receptacle. So I uh, essentially do all the things in the experience of myself and then I can use them as a, you know, consciously I can use them to trans transport information to others um, and hopefully help them out. So, yeah, I, so I needed to do this consciously. That's why it's a bit more, you know, hard and weird and neurosis -y and creative illness -y almost as well. Um, and, and, and yeah, but I needed to do that. And now I've, I've pretty much got to the other side. I'm at the point, if you, if you do Google that circle, so if you do, if you do actually go Google that hero's journey circle, I'm at the point of atonement, which is where you essentially are reversing the wrongs that you've done, possibly in the challenge segment of the circle or possibly even in this uh, when you're just starting your journey as well. So you're reversing some of the things that you've done wrong. So, for example, I'm now starting to reverse some of the things I've done wrong within my anxiety or my neurosis in its early stages. So. For example, that for me would be actually uh, entering into the adult stage of life in, in Jungian stages of life. Um, you know, I'd, I'd enter into the adult stage of life fully, uh, take complete responsibility for more, all my issues. And that is the atonement. And then obviously I can get back. And then obviously after the atonement, I then get the goddess or the princess in the form of a relationship. And and then you, you're, you're there, basically, you're, you know, you're at the top. But you see, you have to understand that you're already perfect the way you are and that the knowledge of you being perfect the way you are will be the thing that gets you through the full circle. If you think that you're trying to attain something uh, perfect, then you're not going to attain it because you see per perfection is is impossible to attain. So you have to realise that you've always been perfect the way you are to realise that you will get yourself through it. Because if you didn't know you were perfect the way you were, perfect in terms of imperfect, you're a perfect, imperfect human. Um, but if you didn't realise that, then you wouldn't have enough strength to get to round the full circle, you see. You'd simply fail. You'd say, right, I'm done, I give up. So you have to be consciously aware as well of the fact that you will get through this. Now, well, you don't have to be consciously aware of it, but you can be unconsciously aware of it as well. So you can maybe in your unconscious, in your dream states and stuff, you're essentially being able to, um, you know, you can uh, be unconsciously aware of that. So you, in your dreams, you are looking at yourself as the hero um, and that is giving you the fuel to um, essentially move forward through this, this wheel. But there's also two aspects of this wheel. There's, the hero's journey, and this is how I see it, this is not, this is just my own theory now, so I'm getting into my own theory here, but there's two aspects of this. There's one, like I mentioned, about the, the you know, someone getting a new job, and that's the challenge, and then we have this slight transformation, and then we get back round. That's the kind of more standard, less spiritual 
uh, part of, or, or version of this hero's journey. And that's just essentially uh, a child moving into the adult stage of life. So that's one of them. But then you've got another, which is exactly the same, just a replica of that hero's journey. And this is a spiritual journey. And the transformation in consciousness in this one represents spiritual awakening, enlightenment, moksha, nirvana, whatever you want to call it, right? Because they're all the same, really. People like to dress them up as different, but they're all the same. Or at least in my view, they're all the same from what I've learned. So there's that spiritual journey. So you've got that one, and then you've got, in my opinion, so... Yeah, I would say um, that there's these two different ones. But again, this is just my theory now. I'm splitting them off from each other, really. But I would say there's a spiritual one, and then there's the more just normal. Now, most people only need to go down the normal one. They're happy. With, that's fine. That's perfectly great for their life because that's all they need. That's, that's brilliant. You know, they can be a fully-fledged human being. They can live in society brilliantly with that one. For me, what I've had to do is go for the spiritual one because um, I've n I've always been that personality. I've never really felt completely integrated with society. So therefore, I've had to go down the spiritual path, the, the spiritual hero's journey as well, to be able to really become a fl fully fledged human being in the sense of the other, um, in, in the sense of the other kind of slightly more normal journey, let's say. And then being able to compare the two is giving me an enhanced view of being able to say, oh, right, this is who I am. This is my sort of hero. This is my sort of development. And I can see that more clearly now. And it's funny that uh, today, actually, I got this weird realisation that um, I always had an idol of myself. And when we say an idol, we mean, you know, a, a projection. When we project onto the future what we think we're going to be like you know you might think you're going to be this amazing person or whatever you might think you're going to be one way you might have an image of yourself um and my image was always um someone quite normal but it doesn't really represent my personality too much so then i started to fight that hero image of myself um because i didn't think it was the right hero image of myself because it's not eccentric enough or anything and then i tried to replace it with a fully eccentric personality type which is what I am but you see I'm not that I'm not the fully eccentric personality type uh, and actually I got this realization today that I've been fighting myself on two different levels I've been fighting myself as being normal and I've been fighting myself as being eccentric when actually I'm not I'm actually an integrated uh, part of the two so all this talk years ago of me saying, oh, I want a rainbow suit and I want to be this eccentric guy and I want to be, a ha you know, have crazy hats and all the rest of it. That is a part of me, but it's not the fully envis envisioned person of who I would like to be. I realise now that actually if I, let's say, think of this hero of myself in the future, it would be the fact that actually I integrate my eccentricity on a smaller level. So I, as I say, I have this normal vision of myself, an eccentric vision. The normal vision of myself is a um, essentially like just a guy in a shirt and, you know, very normal kind of person who's public speaking or whatever, something like that. And the other one is, an, again, a public speaker, something along those lines, philosopher, whatever, I don't know. But something like that anyway. I always think public speaking, I don't know why. But that one is dressed in full rainbow suit. But now I realise it's not that. It's... Um, a guy, my hero image, my idol, is a guy that is in a normal suit, but then has like a little um, rainbow coloured handkerchief and possibly, you know, a rainbow bow tie or maybe not just a rain, maybe not a rainbow bow tie, but maybe like a some sort of extra eccentric hat. You see what that's doing? That is incorporating both aspects of my personality to get together as an integration, sort of like when we integrate uh, in Jungian psychology, you might want to Google this, but, you know, the shadow side of yourself, which is the negative element of yourself, the dark side of yourself, with your social persona, which is the the, the slightly more positive aspect that you um, present to other people. Now, normally, sometimes the social persona can't isn't po that positive, um, but normally it can be more positive. So it's kind of like the integration of those two opposites, but in my eccentricity and normality, because that was something that I was fighting a little bit i didn't know where i fit in i didn't know whether i was completely eccentric or whether i was completely normal but i realized it's the union of the two 
of sometimes being eccentric, sometimes being normal, like you've seen on this channel, uh, that is the, the way to go for me. So it's very interesting that I got that realisation this morning, uh, as I say. So it's just this subtle eccentricity, friendly eccentricity, if, if possible as well, or kind of is that anyway, mixed with this more normal persona of um you know just a, a normal a normal human human being really so it's very interesting that anyway so i'll just have a look back in the chat because i've uh i've neglected it a little bit so i apologize um look ha for how the feminine is represented in your dreams ads i.e your anima yes i'm having trouble with the anima at the moment i've been on the anima for a very very long time um I have wrote about four pages on the anima in my, I have a document on myself, you see, and I'm still stuck on whether I'm at stage three integration of the anima or whether I'm, I've fully integrated my anima. I don't know. I don't know. And um, it's frustrating me because there's certain things in my life that's saying and certain aspects to my personality that are saying, yes, I've integrated it. Um, and then there's certain aspects that are saying, no, I haven't. Now, I don't want to go ahead and fully be committed to say I've integrated it because um you know it obviously it ex uh, Carl Jung said exercise caution or sort of one of his students maybe said this you know we were like exercise caution when before you're starting to say you are you have fully integrated all this stuff because sometimes that can be a little bit premature so uh, I have been working on the anime for quite a few months now um and it goes hand in hand might be integration of my anima or the lack of integration of my anima goes hand in hand with the idea of me not quite getting through this hero's journey and not quite hitting, um, you know, back to back to um, the known part of the hero's journey and obviously um, realizing that atonement fully. So I'm not sure. And there's loads more. I could I could reel off tons of, of I've got on this document about my anima, but. Um, there's part of me that, as I say, thinks he's integrated it. Part of me, he? Am I telling myself in third person now? The fact is, we have to establish that on these videos, for a very, very long time, and, and many people have said this about me, I do seem to have quite a feminine aspect. And so that must mean my animal is somewhat developed. It's got to be to a good extent. Um, it must be at stage three, which is Mary. Um, whether I've got to Sophia yet, I'm not too sure. But I, I kind of feel I have. But I, I'm not, you know, I'm not 100% committed. But I, it doesn't matter anyway, because when I get into a relationship, then I will um, be integrated with my animal anyway. It doesn't matter when it comes about. It's going to it's gonna eventually happen anyway because of being able to fully see a woman for all of her aspects, you know, the flaws, the positive sides, the virtues, the everything, all all of the woman, I'll be able to see that in a relationship because I will be in such close quarters with them uh, and therefore that will fully integrate it anyway and click it on. Um, but, you know, I feel I've, I've got a good... Um, I feel like I've got quite a good feminine side anyway, so it's not too bad. Um, you're another brick in the wall, get, get a grip, lad. Well, no, but you see, Carl Jung and all the people, you know, psychologists and philosophers, if um, they didn't be this rigorous, we would never understand anything about um, the human psyche. We would never, and neuroscience even these days, if people didn't dig this deep, to a lot of people, this is ridiculous. This is like, why the hell are you doing this, you know? But if you don't dig this deep, you know, if you don't go this deep, if if there aren't people out there to do that, humanity will never understand itself in, in any huge capacity of the word. So you've got to, there's got to be people out there who do this. And uh, there's also got to be people out there who don't do this, who are just simply living everyday life because that allows the people who do this to be able to understand uh what is going on with people's normal lives and stuff and, and why they do certain things and why they are um you know certain ways they are and stuff so it interests me massively you know it proper interests me massively um sad news about bcp the doctor says fingers will straighten out soon what's what's that all about i don't even know I think there's a wee way to go with your, uh, with animal work. It's a lifetime's work, to be honest. Keep noting your relationship with it and realise it, it is a part of you. Yeah, that's what also um, I saw on um, 
but it was something I read as well that what you need to start to do is uh, discern it from reality. So every time you think it comes up, you've got to discern it from reality. Now, I'm quite good at that because sometimes I'll go into uh, fantasies and stuff. Not quite active imagination, but sometimes I'll go into like little fantasies and stuff. I suppose it could be called active imagination. But then I'll, I'll be able to see this image and then I'll talk, you know, with this image kind of thing. And uh, and we and I can I can I know that that's part of me, but also I know that there's a big part. Of the, but this is a weird thing that gets me because I've always had a mana figure. I've had from very quite young actually someone who I talk to in um, the sense of a wise old man figure or a saint figure. I can't quite imagine the figure. Don't get me wrong, but. I can I I feel like there's this strong element to the, in the back of me that is so, it's like partly me, partly not me in one weird way, and um, I always think that's the mana figure. But then I think to myself, well, how can it be the mana figure? Because it can't be the mana figure because I've not let's say I've not integrated my anima. It can't be the mana figure so long as I've not got um, hit high, hit the dislike button. How can you hit the dislike button twice? You can't do that. Um, but, no, it can't be the minor figure if I haven't integrated my anima. But what is this thing that's inside of me that is this person who is there that um, is, is giving me strength that is uh, this kind of figure, this figure of light, essentially, in one regard, um, who is transcending the shadow and the social persona what's happening is this this thing that i'm talking about this person is um is transcending my shadow and, and then my social persona it's actually it is i can feel it transcending it it's not judging it's not a bad force or it's not a good force it's just it's just there it's weird it's weird a wise being is welcome at any stage, and yes, it is a part of you and something greater than you. So greater is in the sense, does it come from, let's say, a generality of consciousness? Um, does it come... But but you see, I, yeah, it could be... I mean, some people would argue that it's some sort of um, spirit or something like that. I'm not sure, soul or whatever. But um, I don't know. For me... Is it not one of the thoughts that's running through my brain that then is attributed to the generality of consciousness in which the generality of consciousness we could argue is from the ultimate energy or the eternal energy beyond existence and non-existence itself, which if you encapsulate yin and yang, we've got, you know, yang and yin, and then we've got the positive and negative, uh, but also we've got the circle that yin and yang are kept within. So therefore we have the positive and negative, but what transcends the positive and negative is the, the one energy of the circle. So um, if we think like that in terms of the shadow and the persona, social persona and the shadow, they're the two yin and yangs, and then we have this mana figure that is the, that is the one energy behind it. So that could be the case that essentially uh, the, the one energy behind this is the mana figure which then links directly to beyond non-existence and existence itself to the one eternal energy if we want to call that god we can call that god if you're scientific you can just say eternal energy if you're Taoist, you can say Tao. if you're hindu you can say brahma or brahman or whatever it doesn't really matter what name you give it it's not really scientific or religious it's just whatever's there um, but this mana figure is a part of that which could be um, uh, described in the way of that one energy being the voidless void because it's the voidless void because it's not non-existence, it's not existence, it's beyond that, it's beyond all of our conception essentially. So we can we could say that that part of our psyche is linked directly to that and of course it would be linked directly to that because we are in that circle we are the existence part of that circle um you know of the yin and yang essentially so therefore you know our psyches could work just the same as the yin and yang which is like everything in life positive negative male female light dark you know all the rest of it like everything in life is 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 polar is yin and yang like that so um yeah i don't know i don't know but it's interesting and uh, i'm continuing my work with it and uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna get somewhere 
and uh, try and get to be um, the best possible version of myself that I can be. Um, and then from that, what I can do is I can start to help others to be the best person uh, they can be. Now, you know, a couple of thousand years ago, we would have said this was the Holy Spirit working within someone. To me now, really, um, it's a mix between, I think at this point in time, in this point in um, in, in life here now, uh, in this sort of time zone, we're coming into this realm of religion and science being very, very closely linked, but religion and science both don't know it, or very few people know this. But it's not necessarily a Holy Spirit. It's a psychology, it's a transformation in consciousness that, you know, this process, whatever Jung thought up with, you know, thought up, this process is a transformation in consciousness that allows a human to get to his a or her, uh, him or herself to get to their apex of human consciousness the best place they can be and then that allows them at their apex to work down and um, essentially um, what I was trying to say here essentially create convert other people into its apex of human consciousness so that then everyone can fulfill to can, can in some way fulfill their potential uh, to the best maximum amount possible we could look at that from a scientific point of view or a psychological point of view as that way but we could also look at it as a religious point of view or a spiritual point of view because the that energy transcends scientific knowledge and even also somewhat philosophical knowledge or religious knowledge so therefore it's both a scientific and religious process at the same time people can't see this however because scientists don't like m m most scientists will say or a lot of scientists don't really look w at mysticism spirituality or religion with, with much favor and religion and mysticism and, si and, and such forth don't look at science with much favor whereas if the two just came together if we could get a good few intelligent people together both religious and scientific spiritual when we combine these things, I think we could create something incredibly beautiful in the world and everybody could um, realise an apex of human consciousness that is beyond what we could what we could imagine, really, or, or beyond essentially enlightenment, but um, a, uh, a, a form of enlightenment that unites both science and religion together and that is not judged by any concept of humanity that is just simply there as a form or a vessel of consciousness a transformation of consciousness so yeah it, it would be it'd be very interesting and I, I feel like i want to do it i want to be the person to do it not necessarily just for me i mean clearly i'm going to be honest and say yeah it is a bit of an egotistical thing i want to be the guy to do it but also that it would help so many people it would honestly help so many people um be able to to understand that but the problem is religion and science they are the solution don't get me wrong they're the solution but they're also the problem because one has one way of dealing with things the other has the other way and they're not a lot of the time uh, apart from a few radicals here and there radical thinkers or whatever they're not willing to 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 kind of mutually and here we go yin and yang again maybe i don't know science is yin and religion is yang or religion is yin and science is yang the two energies coming together inside the circle that then creates um the uh, this enlightenment or this transformation in consciousness it all it all makes sense you know but no one no one no one will do it you know and the spiritual uh, gurus and the spiritual leaders will always stick to spirituality the scientific leaders will always stick to, to science and that's how it is and that's what divides the world essentially and and uh, it's a shame it, it's it's a shame because i'm out here trying to unite everything and everyone else is there uh, blooming oh no we don't go i want to do it my way i want to do it the other way but i'm just like yeah but but then we also have to argue the fact that well what you're saying is your own unique viewpoint and that is you saying look let's do it my way so therefore we can't also i i, I have to assess myself on that basis and say well actually my way might be wrong and i've got to accept that you know so also that's something that we've got to say i've got but it's got to be got to be factored in you know into our analysis with this it might it might be wrong so um i can't have the i can't have too much 
ego uh, inflation or anything around that, that that my way is the best and that's what kind of limited limited Freud in a way that his you know he was like I'm I, I'm sticking to my way and I'm not going to entertain any new ideas and you know obviously Jung went off on his own and, and enti- entertained new ideas and he got uh, in my personal opinion uh, you know a little bit further um, not to say that Freud didn't have brilliant ideas but you know, I feel he was blinded a little bit, maybe slowly into his slightly later life, by the fact that he thought he was right, and that and that's that essentially, and he wasn't gonna entertain these ideas. And he saw that even when he was with Jung, when he was with Jung, and he, in his association with Jung was starting to break down a bit because he was not having it any other way but his way, and uh, and therefore, you know it kind of taints you so you've got to be careful with your own ego coming into this about really having too much of a fixation on your own theories or own ideas you've got to be golden rule of philosophy you've got to be open to new ideas you've got to know you've got to be open to entertaining new ideas um ad you got to stop saying stuff that uh cause it's mental ocd I know cause. Oh, oh. Why am I saying cause? Cause I have it. Ad, you gotta stop saying that stuff. Cause it's mental OCD. I know. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not saying. No, no, no. It's not mental OCD. It's people like this. People on this level of thought are the ones who make the most brilliant discoveries. It, it, people who go to the depths of insanity. People who go to the depths of their own thought make the brilliant discoveries. Albert Einstein was one of these people who was completely, ab- almost obliterated by his own thought processes because they were so intense. But if he didn't do that, we wouldn't have, you know, general relativity. We wouldn't have these things, um, you know. So I will not stop for anyone or anything, and I will not stop if people are saying this is too much or whatever because this is the this is the way that humanity gets advanced or progress. Now, most people don't see it because, you know, mainly it's done behind closed doors. So, for example, uh, you know, I would be working on this without talking to you guys on here, um, and therefore they wouldn't see how intense it was or how rigorous it was. But, um, you know, these are the people who who make the breakthroughs. These are the people who who do brilliant things and, and, and really make humanity better for the process. And I don't care how how damaging it is on myself i'm gone i don't care i want to dedicate my life to to helping humanity and and just really understanding the psyche and philosophy and life and everything and and then that's me done because i'll be i'll be happy i'll be so happy it makes me happy doing this it makes me so happy doing this just constant thought and making connections i mean oh yeah that goes with that and that goes with that it's so brilliant it's so beautiful and and um, I, I just, I want to make everyone so much more happy because of it, you know, I want to make some people, you know, just so much more of, not just happy, but more integrated with themselves, so even if that does mean that people have to face a few of their demons along the way, then uh, that's what they have to do, but that ultimately makes them a more happy person in the process, because they're confronting um their their kind of shadows and stuff but if i can do this if i can try and really transform this then i can i know i can make um i can make humanity better and i can make the world a better place i have no doubt in that no doubt it doesn't matter what anyone says i've never doubted myself in that anyone can berate me anyone can say literally anyone could say anything they could start blooming kicking me and punching me i've never had doubt that's the that's the insane level of confidence i I always have in myself, it's weird, I just, and no one can ever shatter that, it's weird, it's, I've, I've never, never been shattered with, with that that's inside me, it's, it's so, it's so weird. Uh, well that's, actually Yasmin says, uh, I just hope you enjoy the present and uh, appreciate who you are now. That's where spirituality comes into it, so this intense level of thought is, um, is, quite damaging like whoever it was that said they said you know it's OCD and stuff I do agree with that to some extent so let's go back to that and let's say from a more centered standpoint I do agree with that a little bit but you have to have an outlet so what what my outlet is is meditation and spirituality 
So that brings me an outlet of being in the present moment, in looking around at things and being absorbed with just how beautiful the world is, the world is in this present moment, in this exact moment now. And therefore, when I exercise that, the thoughts start to get reduced. And then what this means by exercising that and having that as a base is it allows me to think on a more higher level because I'm able to withdraw from that thought when I need to. Um, so, you know, there is an element of um, passivity, I suppose, within what I'm doing. It's not, I'm not like this all the time or anything like that. If I was, then I would, I would be, well, I don't know what I'd be. I'd be just be locked up somewhere, I suppose. But, you know, it is about, it's, it, it's kind of, about balancing it. it is about balancing it so don't get me wrong i do have these other things in place that allow me to balance these things and it is it's very much a balancing act you sometimes i overdo it on the thinking other times i overdo it on the meditation or the the non-thinking or the trying to be spiritual and be living in the moment and stuff because you can overdo it on that as well you see um so it's just this balancing act and again it's like yin and yang you've got the thinking or the the academic world you've got the spiritual and the, the kind of, um, you know, transcendental world. And it's just about balancing the two in this act of yin and yang, you know. So, no, it's fine, uh, Yasmin. Um, also, love yourself because you are awesome as you are. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I just, I, I don't really try and define myself too much anymore because I've tried for so long. I, well, I do, I do define myself, to be honest. I, I like trying to define myself only in the context of, trying to define myself. I know that's paradoxical in its nature, but I kind of get what it means. I only define myself because I like defining myself, but then what I do, once I've def tried to define myself, I withdraw from that and I, re and I say to myself, well, look, I've tried to define myself. I don't care who I am really. I'm just whatever this bag of skin and emotions and thoughts and stuff is, etc. And I'm happy with that. Um, but I don't try and but when I do define myself, as I say, I don't stick, what I'm trying to say is I don't stick to that definition myself. I only try and define myself for the advancement advancement of my own knowledge because the only way I can really truly get interested in something is by, uh, and this sounds very egotistical, but is by um, drawing something inside me and try and relate it to myself so that then I can have that connection. Um, but yeah, once I've done that, I just literally... Um, what is the young book I've been reading? It's over there, I think. One sec, I'll see if I... If I if, it might be over there, it might not. But let me have a look. This is... I've, I've read this one, but also I've read a lot online as well. I've not just read this. I've read a lot on... Um, uh, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what the website's called, but I've, I've read loads on different websites on him as well. And I watched a few uh, videos from Jordan Peterson about Jung, and I watched the face-to-face -face documentary with Carl Jung as well, which is quite good. Um, but I'm still very much a novice with it. I'm just getting into it really. Uh, I want to get a, some of his actual proper books, but this is just a very short introduction on Jung. Um, it, it discusses some of his um, kind of relationship with uh, Sigmund Freud, it discusses the anima, the animus, the shadow, and I did more research on them online, to be honest. This was, I actually already understood the anima and the animus before I read this book, but then I just read this book and it gave me a bit more information on them. Um, but yeah, it's very, very interesting. Anal analytical psychology is interesting and, uh, you know, Jungian psychology is cool. So, um, yeah, I really enjoy it. I really and and the reason I enjoy it is because it ties into spirituality so much. Because a lot of what Jung drew, drew upon was myths and spirituality and religions and stuff, and drew it all into um, psychology, in which you can use all that to um, create a, a stronger sense of self. It's very very interesting. But yeah, so uh, Jung there anyway, which is. Uh, pretty cool so i really like that book anyway but i am going to do a video on my philosophy channel on um a lot i think i'm going to do a video on the hero's journey and stuff because i know it quite well now and i'm uh you know as i say because i'm going through it myself it's interesting so i might do one of them over on my philosophy channel recapping a bit of what i've said here tying it up a bit and, and making it a bit more manageable anyway so 
I will leave it there, guys, because we're on 74 minutes. I said this would be half an hour, and it wasn't. But anyway, I'll leave it there, and I will see you in the next one. So, yeah, I'll go and see my friends now and just stop thinking for a bit. So don't worry. I'm not going to go crazy or anything and, and think all the time. Um, and, yeah, I will see you in the next one. So see you very soon.